Hi everyone, I'm here to bring you a boring matchup of Nerf Hub Astrobiotics versus Andromeda, the two overwhelmingly popular IDs during Worlds 2014. It was competitive back then, and it still is now, so why bother changing? Not, not much to say about, about my opening hand, except that it contains two agendas, easy to steal agenda, so it must be mulligan into a hand of one agenda, hard to steal, and a hedge fund. I really want to play the hedge fund, so I install Mark the Counts first click, so I can draw an extra card. Then I obviously protect HQ for Siphon, but here I make the huge mistake of playing the hedge fund. This is a huge mistake against Andromeda, because she won't run first click against your centrals if you ice them both. But now that I don't ice them both, I give her the laundry uh, opportunity to dirty laundry, potentially with an R&D interface. So that was a huge mistake on my part. I should have thrown the Galahad on the R&D. So because of that, I give him a free laundry run. Thankfully, it wasn't an Astro script or another agenda that he top decked. So boom, let's stop here. What will you do in my shoes? I just drew a quandary. Of course, I need to protect R&D. So which ice would you put on R&D? The choice is quite obvious, right? Galahad. That's because he's expecting the R&D ice to be a quandary. He would think that um, I have no ice in my hand other than the quandary because I did not ice R&D. If I had any ice, I would have thrown it on the, on the R&D. So he might be locked into a false sense of security thinking that it's a quandary there and he would happily install his code gate breaker and run R&D. If he sees the Galahad with a Lancelot on it, he is in for a huge nasty surprise. I will be able to trash his code gate breaker and set him back a hell lot. This is the biggest advantage that Grail Ice has over the standard architect Eli suite. And not to mention that he hasn't seen any Grail Ice, that's the most important thing. Uh, why I wanted to pause at that juncture. Because he hasn't seen any of my Grail Eyes, he doesn't know that I'm running Grail, so he doesn't expect a, co a barrier to trash programs. Well, here he actually makes a mistake. He knew that it was a quandary, he wanted to install the code gate breaker, but he brought his corridor out instead. Thankfully for him, that worked heavily in his favor because it was the Galahad that I placed on R&D. So very lucky for him, he as a result, he's able to break through my R&D and steal an agenda. Or not. But that means that the gag is up. He knows I'm running Grail Ice and he has two of his three breakers out. So there's not much I can pull over him. So I do find a Lancelot and I immediately use that to ice up my R my HQ, knowing that it's porous. Wrap around against Corroder does nothing. So hopefully a double ice should uh, keep him at bay. And at this point, I install a Quandry on the remote. Um, because statistically that's my best bet, there's a very good chance that he's running uh, Passport as his code game breaker, which means that Quandry is good on the remote. Mm, I just need another ice to protect it so that it will be safe from inside job as well. Unfortunately in this case, it's not the Passport that he's tutoring, it's the Yog. Scary Yog that breaks all my pop-up windows and all my Quandries for free. Not a good sign. And of course here comes Siphon's me. Ouch. So right now, since I cannot keep him out, I'm just going to um, re res all my eyes so that he cannot gain 10 credits at this point. Uh, I show him a double Lancelot into a wraparound. So with only 2 credits left, obviously he will choose to access instead of siphoning me. Which is perfectly fine by me, because even if he accesses the NAPD, he won't be able to steal it. So at least I've denied his credits. He's not able to get credits from this siphon run. And I think that is somewhat of a mistake on his part. You shouldn't siphon someone when they have so much so much unrest ice on HQ because you're basically just forcing them to rest the ice. At, at least I guess he forced me to rest his ice. If that was his uh, purpose, he accomplished it. Good for him. <coughs> at this point, I decided to play the NAPD in the remote. It's a very risky play, but he's long for it, so I don't really mind doing this. Um, I would much rather have played my Sweet Sweet, but I can't because he's on 3 cards, so it's not equitable to do so. So if he runs my Quandry remote, my NAPD remote, he'll get to see the NAPD, but he won't be able to steal it. And without Desperado out, he won't steal it this turn, so I'm not that worried. I'll think of a way to ice up our, uh, the remote next turn and attempt to score the NAPD out. And that's another mistake he made here. He did not gain any credits this turn. So he's on a, he's on very poor credit standing. I can easily exploit this by advancing the NAPD and double icing it. So um, he can inside job through it, 
uh, because of York, he will break through the server for free, but he will not have enough credits to steal the NAPD, so I'm not worried about that. However, he is going to start getting filthy rich because he has a security testing into John Masanori. Uh, this is a very bad sign for me. And he gets his ferry out just in time. Um, <clears throat> yes, so now he has his full breaker suite up again. But it, so, which means that I need to score the NAPD right now because he will definitely get it next turn. So here he installs Data Sucker and should be expected given that he's running York. And that's very bad news for me because now that he has a Data Sucker token, none of my eyes can stop him. Uh, Merlin can be broken with a York for free. This is the worst part. So if I draw into Merlins, I'd rather hold them in my hand than rest them for 6, which a York can break for 0. Not fun at all. All my servers will be porous, and that is really bad. He did a very, very good job of assembling his rig up in double time. Um, this is really nasty for me, and yeah, uh, I now my only hope is to basically tax him, which is still doable because he is dirt poor right now. So I'm just going to stack uh, pop up windows on R and D. They do nothing against York. I should have realized that. But at least they'll give me free money, so I don't have to worry so much about playing the sweet sweets from, from my hand. It, all the while, I'm hoping that I'll top deck an Astro script ASAP, so that I can biotic label it out uh, instantly. This is not the time to save my biotic labels for uh, the final agenda. I need to get the first Astro script going immediately. The only thing I have going for me right now is that I've already scored the, the NAPD uncontested, so that's two agenda points down. In the meantime, he gets one of my breaking news, which is a really bad sign, so I need to go tit for tat by scoring the other breaking news that is in my hand. Why? Because if he score, if he finds both breaking news, I'm going to have a very tough time winning because I need to chain three two-pointers instead of two. And you can be almost certain a legwork is coming in due course because I haven't shown any Jacksons, I've been drawing a lot of cards. There are indeed a lot of agendas in my hand. Thankfully, they're all NAPDs, which he cannot steal properly. But it's still a pain holding these agendas and knowing that I'm vulnerable to legwork. In the meantime, he's just racking up data sucker counters like no tomorrow, getting lots of free cards and free money with John Masnori and security testing, and I still only have one grill ice. That last slot that I placed on the remote, I really wish was in my hand right now. I'm only taxing him for two credits per RD run, which is not good enough. And he goes in for the siphon. This is really bad news. Uh, my economy isn't doing very well, and it's about to get worse because I, now I cannot respond to the Cypher. Now this is a good Cypher because he will get the full 10 credits, exactly what he needs to uh, make a high impact run such as this, a leg work into my hand. Thankfully, his ferry was trash due to running with a count Cypher, and because of that, he wasn't able to leg work that turn. Phew! If he actually made the leg work, he could have easily scored four agenda points that turn. So let's bam stop the video here. What will you do in my position? I just been siphon. I'm in. I'm on the back foot right now. Even though I have three agenda points, I don't have an extra script to biotic out. And he's almost certainly going to leg work in next turn. And I can't stop that leg work. Not with what I have in my hand. What would you do? You have two NAPDs in hand, both of which are easily stealable. Well, have you thought about your answer yet? I think the answer here is pretty obvious. If you think about most typical ND decks, their, their real economy is very reliant on show gambles and account siphons, but those are the only forms of event economy besides dirty laundry. Everything else, the majority of the economy actually lies with the resources, security testing, daily casts, and of course in his case, a combo with John Masnori, and he hasn't found his desperado yet. So either way, the correct answer here is to deny his economy. Because this means that he would have to rely on repeated siphons to keep me out, which means that he has to draw a lot of cards from his deck. So what I do here is to install the marked accounts and delete um, both his uh, cash-based resources. Now this brings me down to zero credits, which is kind of a mistake on my part. I should have clicked on the first marked accounts instead. Yes, that, that I definitely should have done that. But here, my main priority was to keep him poor, so definitely deleting the security testing and uh, the other the day, six credit daily cast was definitely the right move. And of course, on his end, it was the wrong choice to siphon me and not clear text thereafter. 
that was a huge mistake on his part. Um, turns out later we discussed um, he was rather new to playing Andromeda. He's used to playing Shaper, so that's why he's making uh, such mistakes. But you can be sure that he'll improve in time to come. But for now, I'm going to capitalize on that mistake. I regained money because he ended his turn with 5 cards. And now he's poor again because he installed his R&D interface and made an unsuccessful R&D run. Unsuccessful in the sense that he did not find any agendas. In the meantime, I do find my sense sense, so that's another way to fast advance agendas. So I'll be looking to do that, but first I need to actually find my agendas. And for now, I still can't keep, keep him out of my R&D, which is a pain. So this is why I didn't draw a new card. Uh, last turn, I would have liked to draw more cards to see my Astro script, but I can't do, afford to do that because that will give him more new cards to dig with RNT interface. So now I'm just playing conservatively until I can find a better way to tax him from RD. And I'm actually beginning to tax him now because he only has 4 credits. I mean, he had to click for credits last turn. He is so poor. He's losing security testing is huge. So now, here, I'm going to draw past the RD lock. And play the pop up on RD. So, this should make me more money. In the meantime, I trash NAPD, partially because um, I don't want to trash anything else in my hand, but more importantly, he probably cannot steal the NAPD without being set back terribly. So, now he's forced to uh, click with Mr. Lee. I don't mind that at all. Um, sure, that means he'll find his siphons faster, mm, but um, it's I don't think it's, it justifies the tempo hit of me losing a click and two credits to trash Mr. Lee. He can have all the cards he wants. He can siphon me all he wants. But once I find my first Astro script and I bounty label it out, I won't need credits anymore. I can float at the 0 to 2 credit mark and just fast advance everything that I top deck from that point on. So my only goal right now is to get to that point, score the first Astro script. So I dig furiously, furiously. Jackson using any HS ability, I can't find the Astro script. All I find are money, pet campaigns, and yeah, useless stuff. So now I trash my other NAPD, it's pretty useless, and I can reshuffle it with Jackson. Yeah, at this point, it's uh, I do want to see my agendas. Even a view would be nice because I have two means of fast advancing. Okay, bam, stop here. His, on his last turn, he spent his last click installing Desperado bringing him down to zero credits. This is a huge weakness. Um, this is why I wanted to feature this game, even though my opponent played suboptimally. This is to show you the weakness, the mistakes that you can make as a rookie player. Do not, do not open this kind of scoring windows for the corp, because you can be dang sure a good corp will take advantage of it. Seeing him on zero credits is like smelling blood. He has, I know that he has no way of getting, bursting up to huge amounts of credits in one turn. What's the best thing he can do? He can't play Sweet Sweet. He, the most he can do is credit, credit, dirty laundry. That will bring him to 6 credits, which is decent, but nowhere near enough to challenge me. So I'm going to take advantage of this scoring window. How so? Look at my hand. What can I do? Fast track. So I first uh, perform my near of hub draw. After still not seeing an agenda, I decide to get the agenda myself using fast track. Um, in this case, obviously, I take out the Astro script and calculated that it requires 4 credits for him to run through my HQ. There is no way he's going to get 4 credits in one turn with the way he left himself in, thanks to him creating that scoring window for me. What you should have done was to click for credits the last turn and then install the Desperado the following turn. At least this will allow him to contest my HQ should I do something silly like this. So yeah, now basically I'm taunting him. I'm saying come into HQ if you can. I mean, he, sure, he can play Sneak Door if he wants. Unfortunately, he doesn't even have the 4 credits he needs to install the Sneak Door. So I'm very confident that um, there is no way he is... What? Yes, really, what's the best thing he can do right here? As I said, um, make gain 2 credits, dirty laundry. That will give him 6 credits, then he can run through HQ. Maybe perform a leg work. That would be my worst case scenario. But of course, here I'm hedging the odds. I bet that he won't be able to do that. So, um, if he can, good for him. Otherwise, I get a free Astro script and one that I really need because I need to close this game up quickly before he finds more economy. Before he finds his next siphon and siphons me down to nothing. 
So that was click one. He ran archives to draw a card to gain a credit. Good start. Can he keep up the pressure? Do you think he can make a successful HQ run? We'll see. Um, in the meantime, he asks questions about Grail Ice. Um, but we all know how Grail Ice works. So basically, he needs four credits to get in. A smart thing he can do right here, because he has so many cards in his hand, he actually only needs three credits to run through HQ. He can take the two net damage subroutine, knowing that I, the last time I showed Grail Ice, I showed Galahad into Merlin. So if I were him, of course, I wouldn't be in this position, but what I would have done, what I would do rather, is to take 3 credits, run HQ. Either that, or depending on what I have in my hand, I might want to save up for a big turn next turn. Instead here, he placed inside job. Very well done. This is um, about as good as it can get for him, given his hand. So he has a 20% chance of getting my Astro script. Of course, he fails. So even if he actually got the Astro script, um, I would be bummed out, but it wouldn't be the end of the world because we would be tight in agenda points and I have the edge because he would be down to very few credits. He's dirt poor. I'll just continue digging for my other Astro scripts. In this case, I don't even need the full chain of Astro scripts. One more two pointer and I win the game. So here he does the right thing. He locks my R&D, but because I have the Astro script token and five points, it's only a matter of time before I find my last agenda. And with um, basically a very taxing Galahad, uh, he cannot keep up the tempo with me, and eventually he loses, as I top deck my last agenda. So yeah, he accesses lots of cards, but I simply score the NAP for the win. So that was the game, and it goes to show how important it is to stay afloat on credits um, as the runner, both in terms of having a good economic backbone for your deck, and playing it properly such that... Um, the corp doesn't catch you with too few credits, which means that a uh, wide open uh, scoring window is blown wide open for the corp. Um, that's another mistake. He actually managed to let me get the first NAPD un uncontested. Uh, giving up two points like that against Astrobiotics is, well, makes the game that much harder for you because it shortens the Astro chain they require to win by one. And that's pretty important if you cannot find the Astro scripts yourself. Uh, so, generally, his deck is still a very fearful one to t toy with, don't get me wrong. Um, he managed to set up his rig very fast, that I must give to him. He did a very good job of that, and York really um, renders this deck very uh, useless, because the main power, of taxa uh, main power of this deck comes from taxation, and York nullifies that entirely, because I'm so reliant on my quandaries, pop-up windows, and merlins. So, yeah, basically... He blanked out a third of my eyes. Not fun at all. But yeah, a small misplay with floating tags and opening scoring windows gave me the game. Thanks for watching and happy net running.